Hello guys and once again welcome to our channel. In this video we are going to discuss about states of matter in more detail. In our previous video as here you can see by the syllabus we discussed the first two concepts. In first concept was stating the distinguishing properties of solids, liquids and gases. And the second concept we were describing the structures of solids, liquids and gases in terms of particle separation, arrangement and types of motion. Now, in today's video, we are going to describe the changes of state in terms of melting, boiling, evaporation, freezing, condensation, and sublimation, as well as we are, all, we are going to describe qualitatively the pressure and temperature of a gas in terms of the motion of its particles. So, without wasting any further time, let us get started. So, our first state change we are looking into is melting. Now, I will, uh, this is a very interesting chapter. Now, um, so I'll be taking some real life examples and I'll be relating this chapter. So I hope you will get, you will understand everything about this chapter. So melting, melting is when a solid changes into a liquid. This process mainly requires heat energy which transforms into kinetic energy, allowing the particles to move. Melting is a process that occurs at a specific temperature known as the melting point, which is unique to each pure solid. Now. Let me just relate this with a real life example. Okay. So this is a change between liquids and solids. So how would you make ice cubes in the tray? First you would obviously fill the tray with water from a tap. Then you would place the tray in a freezer, compartment or a refrigerator. The freezer is very cold. What happens next? Okay. So melting. Now, if you took out the ice cubes from the freezer and placed them in a warm room. The ice would absorb energy from the warmer air around them. This absorbed energy would facilitate them to overcome the force of attraction, holding them together, enabling them to slip out of the fixed position that they held as ice. The process in which a solid changes into a liquid is called melting, and melting point is the temperature at which a solid changes into a liquid. So look, this how uh, you can see how I related a real life example with the, the with this concept with the melting process. So we all, we also do with the others also. We're now moving on to our next stage is about boiling, I guess. Yeah, it's boiling. So now boiling is when a liquid changes into a gas. Now this process mainly requires heat, which causes bubbles of gas to form below the surface of a liquid. Allowing for liquid particles to escape from the surface and within the liquid. This process also occurs at a specific temperature, which is known as the boiling point, which is unique to each pure liquid. Now, this is a change from between liquids and gases. Now, how we would relate this with a real life example? Now, suppose imagine if you fill a pot with cold tap water and heat it on a hot stove top, the water heats up. Now, heat energy travels from the stove top to the pot and the water absorbs the energy from the pot. Now, what happens to the water to the next? What happens to the water next? So, vaporization is the process I will take next. Now, if the water is hot enough, it starts to boil. Now, these bubbles of water are formed in the boiling water. This happens as particles of liquid water gain enough energy to completely overcome these forces of attraction between them and change the gaseous state. Bubbles rise through the water and escape from the pot as steam. Now the process in which a liquid boils and changes to a gas is called vaporization or boiling. The temperature at which a liquid boils is boiling point. I hope you are understanding. Now moving on to our next state change which is about freezing. Now freezing is when a liquid changes into a solid. Now again this is a change between liquids and solids remember. This is the reverse of melting and occurs at exactly the same temperature as melting. Hence the melting point and freezing point of a pure substance are the same. Water is a pure substance for example and it freezes and melts at 0 degrees Celsius. Now this this uh, process requires a significant decrease in temperature and occurs at a specific temperature which is unique for each pure substance. Well, let's come back to our first example, our first real life example which is about the change between liquids and solids. 
and we and we mention about ice cube in the tray that that example now freezing also occurs okay now freezing how the how this process happens now heat transfer occurs between the warmer tray and the colder air in the freezer the warm water loses heat to the cold air in the freezer this heat transfer occurs until new energy is valuable available for the particles to slide past each other okay now what happens this forces them to remain in fixed positions locked in the place by the force of attraction between them this way liquid water is changed into solid ice the process of liquid water changing into solid ice is termed as freezing and the temperature at which it occurs is known as the freezing point okay now moving on to a next process which is evaporation now it is similar to boiling but it is also like it's similar to boiling but not as much similar we'll discuss in this slide only now what is evaporation when a liquid changes into a gas okay so when the liquid changes into a gas if now evaporation occurs only at the surface of liquids where high energy particles can escape from the liquid surface at low temperatures below the bp of the liquid the boiling point of the liquid the larger the surface area and the warmer the liquid of the surface the more quickly a liquid can evaporate and no heat is required and evaporation occurs over a range of temperatures okay now what do you understand by this slide now evaporation and boiling are related to each other but they are obviously different now evaporation constantly occurs on the surface of the liquids okay the high energy particles escape from the surf liquid even at low temperatures and what is like the relation between these evaporation and boiling the difference between the boiling and uh, evaporation now boiling occurs at the boiling point and then the liquid evaporates everywhere in the liquid not just on the surface and is much faster during a change of state the temperature of the mixture does not change okay so now moving on to our next state change which is um which is condensation yeah condensation now condensation is when a gas changes into a liquid usually on cooling when a gas is cooled its particles lose energy and when they bump into each other they lack the energy to bounce away again now what happens instead they group together to form a liquid now no energy is required for condensation to occur and it takes place over a range of temperatures now if we see condensation now this change is between again again between liquids and gases and now we'll relate it with real life example now when you take a hot shower in a closed bathroom the mirror is likely to fog up you may wonder why does this happen some hot water from the shower evaporates and when it comes in contact with the cooler surface such as mirror it cools and loses energy the cooler water particles no longer have the energy to overcome the forces of attraction between them they come together and form the droplets of liquid water this process in which a gas changes to a liquid is known as condensation i hope you are getting it because it's an interesting chapter i, I like it before only because uh, we were relating this chapter with the real life example so we could understand it more properly now moving on to our next state change which is concerned about sublimation now sublimation is when a solid changes directly into a gas okay this is a change between solids and gases this happens to only a few solids just sol uh, so, uh, iodine or solid carbon dioxide and the reverse reaction also happens and is also called sublimation and the other names we call it by is like deposition or desublimation now this process of sublimation occurs at a specific temperature which is unique for a pure substance now what happens here as i told you before this is the change between solids and gases and now we'll relate with the real life example now solids are changed to gas passes to the liquid state first okay however sometimes solids change directly to gases and skip the liquid state the reverse can also occur and sometimes gases change directly into a gas as solids as we discussed here before in this slide now sublimation is the process in which solid directly changes to a gas this occurs when solids absorb enough energy 
to completely overcome the forces of attraction between them. Now you might be like sometimes you are asked about the examples of um, solids that undergo sublimation. So you can see here, I already know solid carbon dioxide. Also dry ice, you know, dry ice is an example of solids that undergo sublimation. Okay. Now moving on. Now here is a diagrammatic summary of the all the above statement we discussed. Now here you can see clearly uh, the solids, the liquids, the gases, the state is all everything melting is happening when solids into a liquid, liquid to gas evaporation, gas to liquids condensation, liquid to solid freezing, solid to gas sublimation, gas to solid desublimation or deposition. Now what happens as as the solid uh, changing, like for example, solid changing into liquid, liquid changing into a gas, we are increasing the internal energy, okay? And as this is going back, we are decreasing the internal energy, okay? Now moving on, this is about gaseous particles. Now, gaseous particles are in constant and random motion. An increase in temperature increases the kinetic energy of each particle. As the thermal energy is transformed into kinetic energy, so they move faster. Now what happens if we decrease the temperature? What happens if we decrease the temperature? This will have the op op opposite effect. Now the pressure that a gas creates inside a closed container is produced by the gaseous particles hitting the inside walls of the container. Okay. Now what happens as we uh, increase the temperature, as we increase the temperature, the particles in the gas move faster, impacting the container's walls more frequently. Therefore, an increase in temperature causes an increase in pressure. Now you can see here a diagrammatic, like it's a, it's a diagram of showing like how these gaseous particles behave. So you can see uh, we have increased the temperature and they are moving in random motion. They are moving like you can see here they're creating a pressure inside this closed container and gaseous particles are hitting the inside walls of the container and as we are increasing the temperature they are moving more they are moving faster and they are impacting the container's walls more frequently okay this was the end of the chapter i hope you understood the, the chapter very well okay so in our next video which is like will be the last video and we'll clear all the concepts of this uh, chapter one particular nature of matter and i will also as promised upload the notes upload all the powerpoints okay so you're only supposed to run these powerpoints and nothing else the real life explanations were only for like it, it, it was an additional information so you can just not be con um, just not just in a confusion okay so Okay, so meet you in the next video with a new concept. Till then, take care and bye bye.